Are people, on average, inherently good? We're watching five interviews with five astronauts. This is astronaut Michael Massimino. He flew two alleged missions and has 23 and a half days in alleged outer space. This is astronaut Donald Pettit. He flew seven alleged missions and has a year in alleged outer space. This is astronaut Leroy Chow. He flew five alleged missions and has 229 days in alleged outer space. And finally, this is Apollo 11's Neil Armstrong and Apollo 14's Edgar D. Mitchell. Our first interview is from 2014 with Michael and Donald on the official government YouTube channel Inside ISS. Focus on the appearance of stars in alleged outer space, specifically when stars are or are not visible, why stars are or are not visible, and what blocks star visibility. Whilst, in, whilst from in Mark space, Cameron. This is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see the stars. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. It's it's not a black a cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You you see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see the Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I, was, yeah. I just wanted the Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large clouds. one and a small one, right? Yeah. And, and then you can see uh, the zodiacal lights. Whoa. Uh, those those are amazing, right before The lights sunrise. of the zodiac? The lights of the zodiac, the z zodiacal Whoa. lights, okay? But one thing to add to this, I think, which is kind of interesting about being able to look into the black void, is that we can't do that when the sun is out here on Earth. And it's not because the sun is so bright. It's because this atmosphere, atmosphere yeah. right? The light comes through the atmosphere and refracts, it and scatters. we see blue. It scatters. Yeah, we see it blue. Scatters. So what we see is we see the blue color because yeah. the way the light gets bent was it only the the no, low. Scattered. Depth. We're told that from space, the stars are visible while on the sun side or day side of Earth. We're also told that starlight is not visible during daytime on Earth because the sunlight scatters on our gaseous air layer and the luminous gas washes out starlight. Otherwise, we'd see them. Our second interview is also from 2014, this time with Leroy on the Russian Times, better known as RT News. So, uh, I guess if you're, you know, you want to be on a reality show and, and fantasize about going to Mars on, you know, vehicles that don't exist and haven't even been designed, um, you know, you're a, you're a pretty far out there thinker. <laughs> wow, thank you for, for cutting through that. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, let's move on to some of your own experiences in space. I know there's been a lot of controversy surrounding your 2005 claim that you saw a UFO while on the ISS, <laughs> which of course you've since explained uh, have been fishing boat lights. But, I mean, talk about this experience as, some of, <laughs> as well as some of the other crazy things you must have seen while out there yeah you know actually on my very first mission we went up and and when you're when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on earth but then when you look out into deep space away from the sun it's the darkest black you can imagine right and so what happens is you really lose your depth perception you can't tell if something's close by or far away did you catch the contradiction Leroy told us the stars are not visible on the sun side or day side of Earth. This contradicts what Michael and Donald told us moments ago. Remember, they claimed the stars are visible on the day side or sun side of the Earth. And when you're, when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. And the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Our third interview is from 1970 with Neil Armstrong from the British Broadcasting Corporation, better known as the BBC, from a two-inch magnetic tape recording directly featured at NASA.gov on the Lunar Surface Journal. Mr. Armstrong, I do realize that when you were on the moon, you had very little time for gazing upwards, but could you tell us something about what the sky actually looks like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any, and so on? The sky is uh, a deep black. Uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the Earth and the moon. The, uh, the Earth is the only visible object other than the sun that can be seen, although there have been some reports of seeing planets. I myself did not see planets from the surface, but I suspect they might uh, be visible. Did you catch the contradiction? We're told that only the sun and Earth are visible in the sky on the alleged moon surface. 
Neil also implied that Apollo 12, which flew in late 1969, reported a similar view, perhaps seeing planets too. This directly contradicts Michael and Donald. The moon, as claimed by NASA, has a gas layer on par with the alleged International Space Station. Without gases for scattering sunlight, the starlight would be visible day and night on the alleged moon surface. PhD astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson also mentioned this while on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Since the moon has no atmosphere, then a daytime picture, if you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night, night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. You don't see stars in the daytime on Earth, not because they're not there, but because the atmosphere is aglow with scattered light from the sun. Even the uploader of Neil's interview notices this problem too. He claims the sky is deep black. The Earth is the only visible object. Armstrong is either instructed to lie or has never been to the moon. <laughs> you serious? Our fourth and final fifth interview are both of Apollo 14's Edgar Mitchell. We're watching two of him because Edgar's face is unclear in the fourth interview. Our fourth interview is from 2011 at the University of Advancing Technology in Tempe, Arizona. Now, let me set this up for you because this is rather important. It leads to a number of things. When we came home, we were in the plane of the ecliptic, which, as you know, the definition is the plane that contains the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. But we were perpendicular to the ecliptic and rotating to keep thermal balance on the spacecraft. So we were flying sideways like this while we were rotating. And what that caused to happen was every two minutes, since we were rotating once every two minutes, uh, that caused a picture of the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, and a 360 degree panorama of the heavens to appear in the spacecraft port every two minutes. And I'm going to try to simulate that for you because it's a powerful, powerful experience. And you see in space, because of the lack of the intervening atmosphere, when you're looking at these pictures of Earth and the heavens, it's much closer to what you see from the Hubble telescope because the stars are 10 times as bright or 10 times as numerous. And finally, our last interview is from 2009 with Edgar on behalf of the propagandist education media giant GBH. GBH is partnered with the American Jewish Committee in Atlanta, Boston College, one of the oldest Jesuit Catholic universities in America, both Boston and Cambridge Public Library, Harvard Law School, the Jewish Theological Seminary, the World Wide Web Consortium, which are the people behind www. the Public Broadcasting Service, National Public Radio, and the Public Radio Exchange, which are the people behind TED Talks, to name only a few. And our, so our mission was complete, and we were headed home, and I could relax a little bit. So I got the opportunity to look out the window, and we were oriented and rotating such that uh, every two minutes, and this rotation was to keep thermal balance on the spacecraft. Uh, so every two minutes, the, the Earth, the Moon, the Sun, and a 360-degree panorama of the heavens came into the spacecraft window. And that's really a powerful experience because looking at the heavens from that perspective, uh, they're 10 times as bright and 10 times as many stars as you can ever see from Earth. So it's an overwhelming experience. And I had the, uh, as I looked at this, from my studies of astronomy at Harvard and MIT, where I studied astronomy to get my doctorate, <coughs> I realized that the molecules of my body and the molecules in the spacecraft and my partner's bodies have been prototyped and perhaps manufactured in some ancient generation of stars. And suddenly that was very personal. Instead of being an intellectual knowledge, those were my molecules. And uh, it was a visceral experience, an overwhelmingly powerful visceral experience and accompanied by a bliss and ecstasy. And I never had that type of experience before. And uh, that, that's another story. We can talk about that later. Do you hear the clear problems? Edgar claims that the stars are visible because there is no luminous gas layer blocking the starlight. 
in space because of the lack of the intervening atmosphere. When you're looking at these pictures of Earth and the heavens, it's much closer to what you see from the Hubble telescope. We can't do that when the sun is out here on Earth. And it's not because the sun is so bright. It's because this atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah. Edgar's own false journey to the moon contradicts itself, as every Apollo mission claims a black sky with no stars from the moon's surface, which is not possible because the gas layer on the false physical moon is par with the false International Space Station. Are people, on average, inherently good? No. No. People are not inherently good and become carnal, visceral, and dastardly without Jesus. Jesus saves from the deceit of Lucifer, the devil. The knowledge you learned here won't save you from hell. The place where teeth gnash and the worm, it never dies. Hell is worse than prison, where the burning is never quenched. Only Jesus saves the sinner from hell. Don't put him off. Choose righteousness. Choose truth. Choose Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, whom died and rose from death for you. They crucified him. Jesus loves you. Let him give you that love. Jesus, my Father, said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that trusts me, yes, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and trusts me shall never die. Do you trust this?